All right. Uh, welcome to our COVID-19 Economic Impact Seminar. I'm WAKR radio host, uh, morning show host, Ray Horner, along with program director. And we thought that we would present this show. And boy, do we have a great panel joining us today here to look at the economic impact of COVID-19. We have with us this morning from the economic department. She is the department chair, Kent State University. Dr. Catherine Wilson is with us. Also president CEO of the Greater Akron Chamber of Commerce, Steve Millard, and the president CEO of the Ohio Restaurant Association, John Barker with us here on WAKR. Catherine, if you don't mind me, let's start with you from the broad perspective, Dr. Wilson. Talk about the economic hit this pandemic has had over a year into this thing now. So, I mean, this has had a huge economic impact. If you think about, if you think about the Great Recession and how great the Great Recession was um, and how long it took to see job losses during that Great Recession, basically in two months of COVID, we lost about 22 million jobs. That's more than twice of what we lost during the Great Recession. And it happened just within a couple of months. Now, about half of them jumped back pretty quickly but I thought to put 22 million jobs in perspective, one way of thinking of this, when we came out of the Great Recession, we had 10 years worth of job growth. So 10 years worth of pretty continuous job growth. And within two months, that entire 10 years worth of job growth disappeared. Like I said, about half of it bounced back, but we're still well below. And so you know, the impact on, on workers has been tremendous. The impact on the economy overall has been tremendous. The second half of the year we rebounded. So if you look at something like GDP, the overall size of the US economy, it was down about two and a half percent for the year. Early on, it took a much a much greater hit. Catherine, when we look at the history of economics, so World War One, World War II, we had big economic growths coming out of those wars, but this is a pandemic. And we go back a hundred years ago when we look at that pandemic, Trace economic history for us. How did the world, United States, how long did it take to recover? So, you know, it, if you think about the, the pandemic, it's kind of interesting to think of it relative to the roaring 20s. We think of the roaring 20s as a pretty great time of economic growth. And so the pandemic happened fairly shortly before that. And, um, and so I think in some ways, how quick this pandemic impacted the economy and the ways in which it impacted the economy suggest, suggest to me and to a lot of other economists that I think we're gonna have a much quicker rebound than the rebound from say the Great Depression or the Great Recession. In both the Great Depression and the Great Recession, it took years of going down and many more years to get back to where we were. Here, it was just like a, it was like we bungee jumped. We just free, you know, a free fall but there's a lot of reasons to think that we're going to bounce back much more quickly. I expect that this will be a pretty high year of economic growth. 2021 will. I think 2022 is going to be a pretty high year of economic growth. You know, and I think maybe around 2023 is where we start kind of getting back to that, you know, our, our stable, what our normal, what we think of as normal growth. But I think this year and next year, we're going to see pretty big bounces back. And that, like I said, that's really different than the Great Recession, you know, 10 years ago, where it took a long time to come out of it. Uh, let's bring in right now the president and CEO of the Ohio Restaurant Association, John Barker, with us. And John, thanks for your time. And you and I have talked a lot during the last year, certainly about the negative side of COVID-19 and the pandemic, how it's hit the restaurant sector of business economics very hard, not only in the country, but right here in Ohio. Paint the picture of 2020 and what you're looking at, John, in 2021. Yeah, thank you, um, uh, Ray. Good morning, and Catherine and Steve. Good to see you both. Um, it's um, similar to uh, you know, I think what Catherine laid out. You know, the job loss is the biggest impact I think because it affects so many human beings, and um, it's not just the numbers. The numbers by themselves are really overwhelming, um, but then you start breaking it down into the individuals who were affected. In our industry was right at the forefront of this with you know, the hotel industry and hospitality and cruise lines and people that work in theaters and people that work in the arts <clears throat> um, just decimated. Their lives are so upside down <clears throat> and have been for quite some time that you know even as the economy begins to come back, <clears throat> 
there are a lot of people <clears throat> who have shifted <clears throat> to different um, uh, industries, different jobs, and then some people <clears throat> because the the mental toll or the, you know sort of the combined sort of angst of all this, they're not ready to get back into into the industry. <clears throat> we're we're seeing that actually right now played out. Um, the last two or three weeks have been the best uh, in terms of sales in the restaurant industry since the pandemic started. <clears throat> And the first thing that started to come out of the lips of our operators, every single one of them is, we can't find anybody to hire. Which is so ironic because there's a lot of people who would technically be unemployed <clears throat> right now, but they're not ready to come back for, there's a different reasons. And we're, you know, we're doing some consumer research and we're gonna work this in as well. Um, some of it's still fear of COVID. <clears throat> some of it is, um, you know, I'm not sure I want to come back into a consumer facing business, whatever that is, you know, I'm not sure I want to do that. Um, some of it is have shifted completely. Now I work at a distribution center somewhere. And then some of it is <clears throat> they, after a long time of getting no funds from the government, now they're getting a lot of funds, you know, from the government. And so <clears throat> there's just a whole host of things that I don't know how this, Kathy, I'd be interested in your point of view on this. I don't know how that's going to affect the comeback, but if we can't get people back into the workforce as, you know, sales and business starts coming back, I'm, you know, we're starting to get very concerned uh, about that. And that's a whole new, kind of a whole new issue since the pandemic started. John, I, I've talked to representatives with the Ohio Farm Bureau and really one hand washes the other, right? Wouldn't you agree with the Restaurant Association, the Farm Bureau at about 50% of Ohio farmers' goods, whether it be meat products, fruits and vegetables, uh, they depend on the Ohio restaurants and the Ohio restaurants depend on them. Talk about that relationship and economically the last year on those two sides. Yeah, you know, it's interesting about half the food in the United States uh, goes through the grocery channel and about half goes through the restaurant food service channel, uh, what we call retail. And, you know, during the pandemic, that shifted to about 70, 30. Um, and so the grocery channel was kind of humming, uh, the, the, the retail channel, not so much. Farmers, farmers, even though they were still moving product, they were moving less product. So you saw early on, unfortunately, you know, people having to destroy product because they just, they couldn't get it into the distribution. People don't understand if you actually go on a farm, the way uh, products are grown, the way they are then, kind of packaged and put together for shipping is very different for the two channels. And uh, no one was ready for this. As we talked to our food distributors, Ray, they were caught, you know, of course this came at them so fast, they couldn't make the shift. And so that's why, you know, you saw a lot of demand at the grocery. Also, we didn't have enough trucking and distribution. We didn't have enough capacity to, to handle all that. Um, and the farmers, of course, you know, we're, we're very close to the Farm Bureau. We're, we're all, you know, we're all part of the food chain. They're kind of at the beginning, you know, we're at the very end, the last three feet. And, um, and so we, we stay very close to them and um, they're, they're, you know, just sort of, uh, you know, praying that the restaurant channel can come back to that 50% uh, that it was before. Uh, it may be different, you know, as you and I've talked, more of it today is takeout, contactless, drive-throughs. Um, now you can just, now you can just hit uh, a smiley face on your phone, Ray, and someone will show up with a pizza by noon. So, you know, <laughs> it's a different world we're in. Well, we're here with WA on WAKR. It's a COVID-19 economic impact seminar. Kind enough to join us this uh, today is John Barker. He's the president CEO of the Ohio Restaurant Association. Dr. Catherine Wilson, Kent State University Department Chair, Economics, Kent State University. And Steve Millard is with us, president CEO of the Greater Akron Chamber of Commerce. And Steve, let's go your way. And you and I have also talked a couple of times in the last year, certainly the difficult times in Summit County, small businesses, large businesses, and the economic bang this pandemic has had in Summit County, Steve. I mean, it's impacted uh, companies across the board, right? Uh, as you know, Ray, we've done a lot of work to sort of support our smaller businesses in this space. And, uh, you know, fully 40% or so saw revenue losses of upwards of 40 to 50% of their business. Uh, and especially as John mentioned in the food services, in the personal services businesses and the accommodations businesses, those folks were just devastated by this. I mean, everything just sort of turned off. And if you did any sort of business that was discretionary in nature, 
the month of March and April and May was really tough on you because everybody just stopped spending, right? If you, if you could cancel the contract or slow down, you didn't know what cash flow was going to look like. We were all a little panicked at the beginning. So some of that's beginning to come back and we're starting to see some indication from our folks that they're seeing business resume, but that those, those really devastated industries are, as John said, much slower to respond. A lot of the normal businesses have begun to come back to 50, 60% of where they were in terms of people in the offices and things like that. But people are still waiting, I think, this next quarter or so, especially with the vaccines, we'll start to see, see things pick up for our businesses again. Steve, I know you have been creative with the Greater Akron Chamber, uh, pulling the boots up a little bit and helping the smaller businesses keep the doors open. But also you've helped them with creativity where we are seeing people change and do an about face and careers and businesses on that side. Yeah, a couple of different pieces. I mean, one of the things John said was interesting how folks have shifted where they're, where they're spending their time now. Um, people have changed careers because they had no choice in some ways. Um, but I think a lot of those jobs that have gone away because of the pandemic, they may not come back the same way, right? And so one of the things we're pushing our employers to think about right now is how do you scale up your workforce in different ways? There is a ton of resource available from Ohio Means Jobs and our, our workforce, public workforce system on helping employers pay to upskill, reskill employees, uh, bringing people into the workforce that have been out of the workforce a while for transitional work grants. Um, so there's a lot of that opportunity where um, the, the state of Ohio will fund 50, 75 percent, 100 percent of the cost of employees for some period of time to get them to a new kind of work, uh, which is going to be important for folks. We've also seen from our, our companies, um, even more recently in the last quarter, less interest. I mean, they all want financial support, right, because everybody needs dollars um, and, and that's important. But a lot of them need help and support on thinking about how to change their businesses for the longer term. Um, they realize their model may not have been sustainable. A lot of companies came into the pandemic maybe not in great shape, right? So this really accelerated their need to do something about that. So I think one of our areas of focus between capital through like the resiliency fund, the Akron Resiliency Fund, our minority business contractors program, some of those things that are happening in the region. I think counseling, mentoring, and support is another area of focus for us right now. Dr. Wilson, let me ask you this. There's so many layers to the economic structure when we talk about this pandemic. And part of the area is travel and recreation. We've talked about smaller jobs. We've talked about the Restaurant Association. But to get those dollars in the economy going as you get into spring and summer, talk about the importance, Catherine, of travel, economic growth, the vacations, the recreations, the lifestyle aspect of this pandemic on the economics from abroad to you know Italy and Paris, France, to taking a trip to New York City, that stuff has all been canceled in the last 12 months. Yeah, and, and you know, as has been mentioned, when you think about different industries, some industries haven't had very much of a negative impact. In fact, some industries have really boomed during this time. Other industries have been hit really hard. So leisure, hospitality, which would include the travel, I mean, they're they're by the, by the end of the year they were still down almost a quarter about 25 percent from where they had started the year and and that very much um is going to have a, imp a ripple impact throughout but the thing about that i think um there's a lot of pent-up demand where that's an area that i think is going to have the potential to bounce back fairly quickly because i think once vaccinations are a bit more widespread when the virus feels like it's a little more under control and people feel more comfortable traveling, I think there's a lot of people who are gonna have pent up demand to, to do summer travel, to do fall travel, including international travel. So I think that's an area that we haven't seen the bounce back yet, but once we get more widespread vaccination, I would fully expect to, to see, again, it, it, it's actually a combination of things. It's pent up demand and then there's also a lot of extra money sitting around. And I know that seems weird when we think about the economic hit we've had, but the recession that came out of COVID hit people very differently. And so you have a lot of people who maybe didn't get a financial hit from it because they were able to remote to work remotely, their jobs continued. And so we've actually seen a higher savings rate um, for some people in, in the economy. And so I think there's gonna be a segment of the economy that's really gonna jump onto the travel and leisure um, as, as the vaccinations get more widely rolled out, which is really, you know, we're getting to the point where now we're talking weeks and months before people can start doing that rather than thinking, you know, longer down the line. 
Great. Yeah. I don't want to jump on your question here, but I did Go ahead, Steve. sort of throw something out there. You know, that's an interest. It's very dichotomous, as you said, right? Different, different people, different ways. Um, our friends down the street, you know, Gojo, they're doing pretty good with the Purell, right? Um, and that will never uh, be at the same level again. It'll continue to grow. But you think about the folks that John services and deals with, you can't make up all those lost tables. You can't make up all those lost months of work and activity. So I think what we've seen from a lot of our small businesses, they've had to dig deep into any reserve they may have had to just survive. And I think it is going to take them while their business will recover faster, as you said, Catherine, maybe earlier than the last recession, the economic kind of parity getting back to where they were is going to take a long time. John Barker, I want to go to you with the Ohio Restaurant Association. Two key words to me in your area of economic recovery is one, trust, John, getting back into those restaurants, and two, create creativity that you and I have talked a lot about in the last 12 months on how the restaurants, and credit them, have really had to think on the run here and have been very creative. And Steve, I'll come to you on this as well. They've been very creative as far as keeping the business coming and going in and out of the restaurants. Yeah, the trust piece was was gigantic. And you remember when this was all starting to roll out, I, you know, a lot of people said they knew exactly what was going on. And of course, what we found out is that no one knew what was going on with, uh, with, with uh, COVID-19. But after we started to understand more about how it spread and what the risks were, and we understood that, the, you know, what's, what masks could do, a face mask could do to limit the risk and distancing could help and, and, you know, more cleaning and sanitizing and washing and hands. It wasn't just Governor DeWine. It was any reasonable politician was asking everybody to do those things. And most reasonable people said, yeah, I'm willing to do that. <clears throat> um, and so what we did is we stepped up. We uh, put together um, a group of um, restaurateurs and health officials across the state, um, suppliers, and we put together the Dine Safe Ohio. You may remember that was a set of, you know, uh, operating procedures that every every food service restaurant had to follow. <clears throat> Later, it's interesting, retail started following it as well. It took a long time to get retail. If you recall, for a long time at retail, people were not required to wear a mask, and then it finally happened. You started to see the numbers come most under control when all that started to happen. Um, and so, you know, we, we're, we're pretty happy that that happened. We, you know, we, we put a Ohio restaurant uh, a promise pledge out. Restaurants were able to <clears throat> apply for that and then, you know, actually put signage up in their restaurant, which had to come complying with all these, you know, requirements and, and the highest um, CDC, uh, you know, guidelines. And, and it was just trying to get people to trust, and not just the guests, but the employees, that everybody would feel as safe as you could going out. Um, and, you know, there were some people that still didn't go out, but there was a portion of people who were going out, particularly people who had to work in restaurants to handle that takeout and things like that. We wanted to make them feel safe uh, while they worked. And so that worked pretty well. The creativity you mentioned is just amazing. I bet, you know, Steve, you've probably seen it across multiple industries, probably you, Catherine, too. But in the restaurant business, what we saw was people setting up takeout, you know, where cars pull up in the parking lot and you text a number or you wave out your window and someone comes out, puts it in your trunk. Looks like a, looks like a drug hit, you know, from, uh, you know, one of the mafia movies, you know, but what you're really is going, you want to get your tacos, right? It was, uh, the people figured some things out like that. And, um, you know, before all this started sit down restaurants, if they did five to 10% of their business on takeout, that was okay. It was really sort of a, just a necessary thing to do for a few of your customers. Now, people see that being 20, 25% going forward. I mean, that's that's like an entirely new business opportunity. So if they could get their dining business back eventually, maybe later this year, to anywhere near what it was before and retain some of that, you know, that new business, that takeout, things like that, um, you know, th that'll help them in this recovery. But, but um, to the point that we were making earlier, some of the restaurants are still down 70% versus pre-pandemic. We just got our newest poll out, which we do every week. Uh, now it's getting smaller. You know, it, it, each each two weeks that we do this poll, the numbers get better. And so they're digging out from 12 months of those numbers. They, Steve, to your point, they've used all their savings. They've probably maxed out their credit cards. You know, they're they're you know kind of praying for that money that might come, you know, from the federal government and, and you know PPP and things like that. But um, they have a long way to go. Steve, why don't you jump on that with that creativity? I know you've done hand in hand with a lot of small businesses, 
if you want to connect that with restaurants, but you've even done it beyond the restaurant sector. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting, you know, entrepreneurs are going to find a way, right? I mean, after the initial shock, they started to do things. So a number of companies pivoted into sort of doing uh, PPE, right? Whether they were sourcing it. So if their business was sourcing materials, they started sourcing PPE. Uh, we've got folks out there who are focused now on uh, facility disinfecting and putting things into your air system to make sure that, you know, that it's being ionized properly. I mean, uh, and then you just have acceleration of things that maybe companies should have been thinking about anyway. One of the maybe the positives from this, well, I wish it never would have happened. Um, moving restaurants, for example, as John said, to think about, you know, those guys who were just taking cash might now sort of increase their payment options and increase their, their mark share. Uh, you know, folks being used, being able to use technology in meetings, right? I don't know that we always go back to doing a one hour meeting in person for lots of things that are going on. Uh, the ability to use technology and connect with each other in different ways. Uh, you know, downtown Akron now has a downtown refreshment uh, uh, district, right? Where we basically are focusing on more outdoor dining. So I think these innovations and changes, a lot of them will stick around for companies, which is a good thing. Um, it was a, a big shock to get there, but I think it will make businesses stronger going forward. Now, the flip side is we are going to lose a bunch of businesses, right? Uh, 10, 15% of our businesses, I think at least, are not going to make it through this or are already starting to close. Um, and unfortunately, there's not a lot we can do for them in the short term, but hopefully they can get recirculated back into other opportunities or sort of work in other places that are doing better. And that's just going to be the consequence of what we're seeing here. Um, Helping people understand where to get help and how connected they are, especially in the black community, has been another thing that we've had to think about because, you know, that community was um, much further, it was much harder for them to get access to help and support. They didn't have the kind of regular advisors and support that others may have had. And so that's something that we um, definitely want to make sure that uh, we focus more on as we go forward. COVID-19 seminar, the economic impact with us here at WAKR. Dr. Catherine Wilson, Kent State University. She is the department chair of economics. Steve Millar, president, CEO of the Greater Akron Chamber and the president, CEO of the Ohio Restaurant Association, John Barker. Dr. Wilson, come on in here. When we talk about economics with the pandemic and we've talked about loss of economics, but let's start to take that arrow forward now. How much in the economic growth depends on new businesses, new restaurants, trust creativity going forward for the rest of 2021, 2022. I know we can't rub the crystal ball, but that's an important aspect of this economic recovery year in, year out. And I'll let Steve and John also jump in on this. We see jobs and businesses grow and open and everything. What about that aspect of this story, Dr. Wilson? Yeah, there is no doubt that that entrepreneurship's um spirit that those small businesses opening up are going to be a huge part of what we see. And, and I think some of it gets to Steve's point of those companies that are able to look at what's going on and see where there might be opportunities, which sounds really weird because it's a it's been such a trying year for everybody. But I think those businesses that are able to say, what opportunities might we grow out of this? Or as John talked about, you know, what, what changes might we see moving forward that we keep with us from this? I think it's gonna be an important part to how we rebuild coming out of this. I think of things like work from home, you know, and, and whether or not companies start doing different, having more options for employees to work from home. Because I think a lot of businesses have, uh, you know, a lot of employees have found they kind of like some of the work from home or businesses have found that maybe that productivity can stay. Maybe not everywhere, but how do we adapt? How do we take the good things from this um, that we can find to help us to be more versatile moving forward? And I think I think that's going to be an important important thing to look at over this next year. John, the same thing in the restaurants, uh, in the restaurant business sector. You know, we've seen creativity as you talked about, but going forward, new restaurants. I imagine this is just me thinking outside of the box that we might see the food truck restaurant side of that business explode going forwards. Talk about new restaurants and how you see that playing out coming. I'm not saying out of the pandemic, but certainly as we start to go forward. You know, you talked about resiliency, uh, Dr. Wilson, and it's true. There are people who have opened up during the pandemic, new businesses in, in our space, hospitality. I don't see too many hotels opening, but we have seen restaurants open. Um, and interestingly, uh, applications for food service licenses by food trucks are very high right now. And we look at you know all this on a relative basis. And um, 
they had the, you know, a lot of those food trucks had to mothball in the last several, you know, I mean, really, uh, because a lot of their business, it, they, they do go to fairs and things like that, but a lot of them really circulate around offices in downtown areas, right, or to even like those suburban little office parks and things like that. Well, no one was there. So, you know, you could you could park your, your truck there, but there wouldn't be any uh, customers coming in. And so, you know, they've mothballed those businesses, but I think they see that maybe as an opportunity coming back, but it might not be around the office buildings. It may be, you know, out in around house, housing areas, you know, where people are, you know, working at home. And so that'll all be different. We are worried, and I'm interested in Steve's point of view on this, if their downtown offices don't refill, you know, because if people do work more at home, that will definitely have an impact, you know, on our downtowns. And it, it will just take, a, the, just the economic recovery could be longer. For our restaurants that are downtown, they live on events, you know, whether it's sporting events or, you know, going to the musicals or, you know, things that are down in our downtown areas. Um, and, uh, and, and they live on people going to lunch, right? And driving to the office and stopping and getting coffee at that little local coffee shop, right? Or going out with a couple friends after work <clears throat> for a little happy hour. And we're, we've had very little of that for the last 12 months. So we're, we're anxious about that, I mean, going back to the office situation, how that's going to turn out. Dave, why don't you jump in and follow up on John there about the maybe the new downtown and what you're anticipating or even seeing in Summit County, Steve? Yeah, I think that um, I've had lots of questions about what's going to happen to downtown office space. And as I've talked to some of our, our company leaders, the office still has a place in their portfolio. It's a place to bring people together, to build culture, to innovate. Now, will some jobs be a little bit more flexible and maybe work at home a little bit more? I think that is going to happen. But I'm not seeing, it doesn't feel like 40% shift. It feels like a 10% shift or so. Even before the pandemic, there are a lot of folks that had these flexible plans. I could see a, a, a change, maybe 10, 15% there in some of those jobs uh, moving, but it's not massive right now. It doesn't feel that way. Companies are looking at how their space needs to change because they might have less people in the office every single day. But I don't think, fortunately, it spells the death of downtown. And, and, and actually, we're seeing the opposite in Akron right now. You know, we have a couple of new, um, uh, new apartment buildings and new downtown living options. Their occupancy rates are very good. I mean, they've been able to continue to sort of lease up those spaces. And I think the Bowery is sitting north of um, 80, 90% right now in terms of its, its occupancy, its, its lease rates. So I think there's positives and there's a lot of more building of that going on. I think this will, um, when we get back to whatever normal is, right? Uh, I think people will be thinking a little bit differently about the balance of their work and those kinds of things. But I don't see this being the, the sort of death of downtowns in the short term, although behaviors are gonna be in the change. There are a lot of industries as we think about that have really gotten a boost here that we're gonna see positives too. I mean, um, as we talked about people losing their jobs, we always see this with recessions as well. You'll see an increase in startups, right? And that's maybe not long-term sustainable entrepreneurship. It's what I call survivorship. People need to go out and sort of apply their skills. So we'll see a little bit of bounce there, but also um, think about categories like personal health and well-being, um, you know, entertainment, uh, how they're going to change. People have discovered a lot of new things in this period of time, and, and I think those trends will continue to accelerate. Steve, in a normal course of time, when we talk about businesses, small, medium, and large, you get new businesses in a calendar year, and you lose, unfortunately, businesses in a calendar year. With this pandemic going on, and you and I have talked about this on the radio, that there are opportunities for people switching careers, whether that be package delivering or whatever that might be. Talk about numbers traditionally that you see in growth in businesses and what maybe you anticipate going forward with maybe changes in careers and maybe new job opportunities? Yeah, so we had been in a period going into the pandemic where uh, business deaths were sort of a little ahead of business starts overall. So we had sort of been going through a period of time where we weren't seeing as many businesses start as stop. And I think that had just been a, trend, a trend for the US um, that we had begun to see, which concerns a lot of us focused on innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, I think this in the past year is probably going to end up being net negative, obviously. But as we go forward, we are starting to see a lot of interest in, um, you know, expansions. Some of that is delayed, as um, Catherine had said earlier, in terms of pent up uh, projects and activity that have just been delayed a little bit. Uh, but our lead stream, our queue of opportunity in not only in Northeast Ohio, but in Ohio in general, is maybe stronger than it's ever been. And I think one of those um, 
things that has been pushed a little bit, right? I mean, how many people do you know who had kids who were in New York or on the coast somewhere, or whatever, during this period have moved home and started to work remotely? And so I think um, the greater Akron area represents a place where you can have a life, a, a great quality of life and have access to opportunity. And with the ability to connect in many ways with your company that may not have been explored before, I think that's gonna be positive for us overall. In terms of career switching, I'm not necessarily a career switching expert. So I think people are, are though going to, as I think John said earlier, this has affected people in a different way beyond just their job. They're thinking about their priorities a little bit differently. I mean, a lot of us have spent, uh, that could fortunately, a lot of the last year at home more, right? Uh, more with our kids, more with our families, those kinds of things. So I think you're gonna see people make choices that reflect what they liked about these changes over the last year. Um, that might affect the way they think about their careers. COVID-19, the economic impact here on WAKR. I'm your host, Ray Horner, with us, kind enough giving us their time. John Barker is the president and CEO of the Ohio Restaurant Association. Dr. Catherine Wilson, department chair of economics at Kent State University, and the president and CEO of the Greater Akron Chamber, uh, Steve Millard, with us. And by the way, to Steve's point, Ohio is one of the largest growing states during the pandemic, to Steve's point, a lot of people coming back to Ohio as economically, it's a good place to live. Dr. Wilson, step in here, stimulus packages. We've seen three of them so far, basically. Back to last May, a shortened one in December, and a big one here currently underway. Do stimulus packages work, Catherine? So, yeah, I think they serve an important purpose. I think it's important to think about what the purposes of these ones are. Um, I think especially in this last one, things to increase the speed at which vaccinations happen um, and things that open up schools. I think those are two important things coming out of the stimulus package that can have wide ranging effects because, you know, we need, you know, as John would say, we need people feeling comfortable going to restaurants and, and eating in restaurants. We know vaccination is an important part of that. Um, thinking about the workers, we, we need, you know, having children be back face to face in school opens up a lot more opportunities for parents who have children um, and for them to be able to, to do their work. And so I think those parts of it are really important. When I think historically about stimulus packages, Part of it was really to try and pump some money in to, to keep the economy going. I'm not sure, I, I think that is a part of this one, but I think it's really more about cushioning the blow for those who have been impacted. And it's really almost more about that, that cushioning of the blow for them rather than a way of trying to step on the gas. Um, because we know that the pandemic has hit people um, unequally and we know that it's had devastating effects on families. And so to let them stay in their houses so that you know they can pay their rent, so they can pay their food. And so I think that has been a, an important part of this stimulus package. And then lastly, some of the aid that goes to state and local governments as well to help them to cover some of the costs they have to do around the education packages and such. And so I, I think that I look at these packages as serving a different purpose than some historically. And certainly over the past year, there's evidence that some of those, the government transfers, especially the enhanced unemployment insurance, for example, really have helped to cushion the, bowl, the um, blow for people. And obviously that also means then they spend that money. Um, but I'm not sure that it's as much of the prime purpose. It seems like a lot of it, Dr. Wilson, is coming back to the vaccine as a real key to the wheel of success for the economic recovery. The vaccine is out. People are out more, they're trusting more, they're doing more, they're spending more dollars and maybe getting out of the negativity or, you know, the, the depression a little bit of the last year and feeling good about things. Yeah, and, and it's interesting to me because um, we think about like government regulations around, you know, government shutdowns and things like that of businesses. And uh, there was enough variability across the country and what states did when they did it and such that researchers have been researchers now coming out that looks to say what effect did those government policies have and honestly what they're finding is the government policies around shutdowns um, weren't particularly impactful because people were changing their behavior anyways and so it's it's you know that change behavior because people were scared of of contracting the virus. And so, for example, if you were to take two counties, one on one side, one state and one in another state, where one state, the government 
you know, the governor shut down the state, the other maybe not. You didn't see big differences in restaurant growing. It's not like a lot more people went to restaurants when the governor hadn't shut down the state compared to when the governor had, because people themselves changed their behavior because they were they were scared of getting the, the getting COVID. And so, you know, I, I don't think we can pull apart the effects of the virus and fear of the virus from these other economic. I, to me, this whole time it has been, if we can control the virus, the economy will recover much more quickly. We can't bring back the economy without also controlling the virus because of people's behavior. And so it, it to me, I, I don't know, I, I was really reflecting even as, you know, Steve and John and you and I were talking of this hopeful undercurrent to some of what we're seeing. Still in a tough time, obviously a lot of businesses still struggling, but boy, it sounds different to me than three months ago or six months ago, because I kind of feel like for all of us who are talking, we see that light at the end of the tunnel. We're not there yet. And we still have, you know, bumps to go through and such, but it does feel hopeful. Like, you know, I, this summer I think is going to look so different than last summer. And I think that's going to bode well for the economy, but also just bode well for people's well-being and overall. I agree, Catherine. Hey, I want to, I want to bring John, Steve in for some kind of final comments from them on this. And John, I want to start with you, president, CEO of the Ohio Restaurant Association. Let's talk about what the association, the Restaurant Association has done in the last year and even now helping out these restaurants. You guys have been in with both feet there trying to do what you can, meetings, seminars, visiting the restaurants, trying to help them out. Talk about what you guys have done with the Ohio Restaurant Association, John. Ray, my friends and family think I just go around and eat food all day, you know, and uh, that's, I'm, I'm trying to help, you know what I mean? I, you know, got to do what you can, but uh, <clears throat> no, we, you know, it's interesting uh, on, on all the levels, you can imagine a, a business trade association would try to help, you know, we've been very active federally, you know, working on the paycheck protection program, which Catherine, to your point was specifically to help cushion the blow and provide some payroll support for small businesses and those that, you know, could show, um, sort of economic calamity, um, and many of them did. And those those two programs helped. Um, the first one wasn't you know quite as efficient as it should have been. The second one was better, <clears throat> more smaller businesses, and um, you know um, more equity in the distribution of the dollars. We finally got that seemed to get that all right. We know from our members, um, our last poll that we did on the PPP, ninety seven percent of the people who applied successfully got the money and were pleased. And so. Thank goodness. It took a little while. Um, and now we have this third, um, the rescue plan uh, from President Biden that's out. And um, and so that has, you know, different pieces that's going to help. But a lot of it, again, is to cushion the blow, focus on the vaccine. For the restaurant, Ray, uh, there's $28 billion in that program for small, business, small businesses, restaurants, bars, caterers, people like that, food trucks, uh, to specifically help other parts of their business other than payroll. They have to show a 25% loss of revenue in the previous year, things like that. And public companies can't access it. Large companies can't access it. So I think the government's worked on this and gotten better at these things. It took a little while. So we advocated for all that. Um, we're working with the uh, governor's office on state grants that because the, the state is getting a, a lot of money uh, coming in and um, there'll be grants for small businesses um, and that's coming through the new budget. And we're, we're advocating for that. And, uh, and then, like Steve said, we're just trying to work with small businesses to help them, you know, with, we bring experts constantly to them in the form of this kind of stuff, Zoom, and we haven't had a meeting in person for a year, it seems very weird to do everything on Zoom, but, you know, it, it, it allows people to access data, you know, and quickly get it, we, we do like a 45 minute quick, you know, webinar on different topics, whether it's technology or people skills or how to encourage your team to go get the vaccine and just every topic you can imagine. And then the last thing, um, you know, the National Restaurant Association set up a relief fund for, for furloughed workers. And so did the Ohio Restaurant Association. We generated about a half a million dollars of people just donating. People, good people just seeing that we had that and some people sending in, you know, that $10, some people, you know, $100. And uh, the notes were so beautiful, just saying, um, you know, I don't have a whole lot of money, I'm retired. I love my little coffee shop down the road. They're closed. I know the people that work there. They're unemployed. I just want to help. And uh, it was beautiful. And then people apply for those grants. Those letters would literally make, make you cry when you see some of that. So some good has come out of all this. People have helped each other. 
and we're trying to get people kind of back on the payrolls and back to their lives. And, um, you know, so those are those are some good things we've seen. Good stories there. Uh, Steve uh, Millard with us, uh, President and CEO, uh, Greater Akron Chamber. Talk about how you guys are really with outreach and more trying to do what you can for businesses in Summit County. Yeah, right. I mean, I think um, we, I won't say a lot of the same things John said, because when you, when you think about membership organizations like his and mine, trade organizations, if we can't shine in a time like this, uh, helping our members, et cetera, we're not doing our job, right? I mean, that's what we're here for. But as you know, Catherine talked about the stimulus as being something that cushioned the blow. And I think she's got it exactly right. This wasn't the kind of stimulus that allowed folks to invest in their company. It was just sort of, let's get through this. My biggest concern coming out of this that we need to be thinking about is, how are we using the funds that have come through this latest recovery act, right, to invest in the future? Um, there's still $80 billion available in the PPP funds for small businesses. So I think the days of grants to businesses to just keep them uh, uh, on par are probably sort of getting close to behind us. We got to think about how we can allow businesses to invest in their next sort of move. And my concern is we're going to see, I'm, I'm hoping we don't see a tightening of credit and credit requirements from banks as things get back to what they perceive as normal. We need to make sure capital continues to flow for companies that are going to need that as we go forward. So as we look at, at recovery and sort of coming out of this, um, where are we investing to ensure that we get long-term benefits for our community and for our businesses and continue to support um, their continued growth to get them back up to where they need to be uh, and where they can go further. Dr. Wilson, some final comments from you. Uh, optimistic for the rest of 2021? I am. I mean, I, you know, cautiously optimistic for the next couple months. I mean, I think right now we got the, the vaccination, which is great, and that's racing against the spread of variants of the virus that seem more contagious. And so I, you know, I, once we get vaccinations into more arms, um, I think that optimism, optimism increases. But then, I, yeah, I think this, the, the latter half of this year, we're going to see a lot more growth. Um, and I think it's, you know, I think we're, it's, that's going to continue through next year as well. Um, so I think cautiously optimistic for now. And as long as vaccinations get into arms, um, case rates come down, it becomes safer to open, you know, for people to to interact more. And then we'll be sitting in a room having these kinds of conversations instead of looking at pictures on a screen, you know, of each other on a screen. And I think I, I very much look forward to that. Well, it's COVID-19, the economic impact. Hopefully you've enjoyed the stories of some sorrow, some stories of optimism and creativity from our panelists today at WAKR. John Barker, President and CEO of the Ohio Restaurant Association. Steve Millard, President and CEO of the Greater Akron Chamber of Commerce. And Dr. Catherine Wilson, Department Chair of Economics at Kent State University. Wealth of information, but I love what our three panelists had to say. It's been a very rough year, but we're all in it together. Everyone is helping each other. And who knows what 2021 may bring, but everybody is working hard to make it and come out of this pandemic on a positive side. I'm Ray Horner for WAKR. Thanks for listening. Great job, guys. Thanks, Terrific. Ray. We're all Thanks, done. Thanks, Ray. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Nice to nice meet you. you. I enjoyed getting a chance to chat with you. Nice yeah, to meet you. You all. can watch it on YouTube and uh, also on um, our uh, Facebook page as well, um, WAKR, and uh, that will be posted at six o'clock tonight on those two. I'm sure it'll be trending. <laughs> <laughs>